The Google Nest doorbell is the latest Wi-Fi connected smart doorbell from Google and the one I've been using for my home over the past six months. I'm going to walk you through my favorite things about it, how long the battery has lasted me over the past six months, how this doorbell compares to its competition, and whether or not I recommend getting a Nest doorbell. First, let's talk about battery life. The Nest doorbell is Google's first battery doorbell, though you do have the option to use a wired connection for keeping the battery charged if you want. The battery feature is perfect for people like me who rent an apartment or for people who don't have or don't want to use a wired connection for their doorbell. Now, depending on how busy your doorbell area is and how often your doorbell is triggered, that will affect how long the battery will last. According to Google, the battery life can last from one to six months. Now, that's a wide range, and to give you an idea of a scenario where the battery would only last one month, your doorbell would need to be triggered 25 to 30 times a day, which is a lot. In my case, the battery lasted about five and a half months before it started to go offline, so for me, the battery life has been great. Though I do wish that Google had given me a bit more warning before the doorbell just shut off because the battery was only at 19%, and at that point, it shouldn't have just shut off. You can also check the projected battery life of your doorbell in the Google Home app, which is a feature I've relied on a good bit. Now, if you plan on installing your doorbell in front of an area people walk by a lot, like a sidewalk, the Nest doorbell has an activity zone feature that allows you to highlight specific parts of the camera's view. So when there's movement in your zone, the camera will record, but any movement outside of the zone, it'll ignore. Another feature I've really liked on this doorbell is being able to set what types of events will trigger the camera to record and what types of events the camera can ignore. For my door, I really only care about packages and people, so I have those enabled and have animals and vehicles turned off. Though if I lived somewhere else or had a pet, I could see how those could be valuable events to record as well. You can easily download clips through the Google Home app by going into history, selecting an event, and then a download button will appear. By default, you get three hours of event recording history. The package detection for me over the past six months has been one of the best things about owning a Nest doorbell. For me, it's been over 90% accurate at being able to detect when a person leaves a package at my door. And in these scenarios when people do this, most of the time they don't ring the doorbell. So this feature has become pretty much the sole way that I can reliably know exactly when a package has been left at my door. Now, the only thing I wish this feature did was actually ring my Google speakers in my home when it detects a package at the door, because sometimes I'll miss the notification on my phone from the Google Home app. The doorbell can also detect specific faces if you subscribe to the Nest Aware subscription service, which starts at $6 a month here in the US for an unlimited number of devices, and it expands your recording cloud storage as well, giving you up to 30 days of event history. Nest Aware also does have a 24-7 recording tier, though this doorbell is not capable of recording 24-7 continuously due to the thermal limitations of the doorbell's design. Google is rumored to be working on a successor to the Nest Hello doorbell that will feature 24-7 recording through a wired connection though, so stay tuned for that product. One of the best features of this doorbell is being able to talk to people outside your door, not only through the smartphone Google Home app, but also through Nest displays around your home as well. The integration is so useful if you keep a Nest display at your desk like I do or in other places around your home. And the two-way audio in my experience has worked really well through the Nest Hub. One thing that really sets the Nest doorbell apart from its competitors in my book is its design and aesthetic. It's like Google, I don't know, hired designers to make the thing actually look good and sleek, unlike the hordes of ugly, bulkish black boxes trying to pass for a modern doorbell that you can find littered across sites like Amazon. Not only does its pill shape, matte finish, and contrasting colors between the camera area and the rest of the body make it look sleek and modern, but it comes in four different colors. Snow, which is what I have, linen, Ivy and Ash. It's like Google is the only company that realized that smart doorbells need to actually look good and come in multiple colors to match different home exterior designs. 
The doorbell is made of 45% recycled plastic, and they even put this adorable touch around the camera, spelling out the word hello in multiple languages. No doubt a nod to the original Nest Hello doorbell. It's also IP54 weather resistant, so it'll hold up in a rainstorm and is rated to operate from negative 20 degrees Celsius or negative 4 degrees Fahrenheit to 40 degrees Celsius or 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Though keep in mind, if you use the wired connection for keeping the doorbell's battery charged, the battery will stop charging when the temperature dips below freezing. Freezing temperatures will also drain the battery faster, as you'd expect with a lithium-ion battery. There's also a USB-C port for charging, and they also made the button to press quite a bit larger than the previous Nest Hello doorbell, which I like. The camera also puts out video in a 4-3 ratio, so you can see everything versus a 16-9 ratio that some competitors have. You'll know when the camera starts to record from the little green LED that lights up. When the doorbell is pressed, Google will play a notification through all of your Google speakers and displays in your home, and since I have so many, it's virtually impossible for me to miss somebody at our door. Now, if you decide to wire the Nest doorbell in, you can just use the chime that already comes in your home. The audio quality is actually pretty good as well when you're talking to people outside your door, either through your smartphone or through a Nest display. Over the past six months, that experience has worked flawlessly for me. One really adorable thing I love about smart doorbells is getting to choose different types of chimes that people hear when you ring the door. Google lets you choose from several different chimes and holiday ones that are available during specific times throughout the year. And the Christmas holiday one this past year was really cool. It would actually randomize which chime you would get. So you'd press it once and you get something like deck the halls, press it again, and then you'd get jingle bells. The last thing I should mention with an S doorbell is setup. All you have to do is connect the doorbell to Wi-Fi, follow the in-app instructions to drill two small holes into your door frame and screw the base plate in. You'll want to make sure that you have a good cordless drill set to make sure you do all of this correctly. The holes are small enough that it should be able to patch up pretty easily even if you're renting. And I wouldn't recommend trying to use something like 3M adhesive to adhere the doorbell onto the door frame because it's going to be less secure and it's gonna be easier for someone to potentially steal. Once you snap the doorbell onto the base plate, the only way to remove it is via the removal tool that Nest provides you. So that's everything I like about the Nest doorbell, how I think it stacks up to the competition, but do I recommend it? Yes, I do recommend the Nest doorbell to anybody looking for a video doorbell that doesn't need 24 seven recording capabilities. It's been one of my favorite Google products of late, has worked solidly for the past six months, and I love the design language of this product. Plus you get multiple color options, which sets it apart even more from the competition. The Nest doorbell battery retails for 180 US dollars here in the US, but it's often on sale for 150. It's a bit more pricey than competitors you can find on Amazon, but it is priced competitively with its biggest competition, the Ring Doorbell 3, which I think the Nest Doorbell battery beats with its aesthetics alone. If you're interested in purchasing a Nest Doorbell battery, check out the links on the side of this video or in the video description below. And if you're interested in more smart home products, check out the recent reviews we did on the August Wi-Fi door lock, which pairs nicely with the Nest Doorbell, and our how to start a smart home in 20. 2022 video. If you have any remaining questions about the Nest Doorbell battery or want to share your experience with this device, leave a comment below. Hit that thumbs up button if you like this video and subscribe to the channel to see more videos on Google and smart home products like this one. For six months later, I'm Josh Tedder. Thanks for watching.